Welcome back to the Engadget stage live from CES. I am managing editor Terrence O'Brien, and I have assembled a panel of technological experts from, from the uh, masthead of Engadget. We've got Richard Lawler, Jess Condit, Nick Summers, Evan Rogers. Um, guys, how is CES treating you? <laughs> so good. So good? So nice. All right. Yeah? yeah? Pretty the well, best. Pretty well. All right, so I, I kind of just want to like run through some of the big themes, some of the highlights of the show, kind of get a feel for it. Um, Richard, what was your favorite thing you've seen, just product-wise? All of the TVs. As All of the TVs at once? If you know me. Yeah. So was there like a, what was like the big deal in TVs this year? Was like a big theme, a new advancement that everybody was super excited about? There's not a brand new technology necessarily, but 4K and HDR are here. They're everywhere. They're affordable. Uh, I think 1080p is pretty much dead. So, uh, were 4K and HDR not here last year? They were, but they were only starting to peak into a range where most people could buy them. Now you have high-end TVs, like the really high-end LG OLEDs that bring the top quality for 4K and HDR, but you also have TVs from manufacturers like TCL and Hisense that bring Dolby Vision and really quality, pic really high picture quality at an affordable price. The, the sort of thing that you're gonna probably pick up for like $400 at a Costco. Exactly, it's out there for everyone and anyone to get and there's plenty of quality also. Or there's plenty of content also. And, and we saw a whole bunch of TVs with uh, virtual assistants getting built into them and that seems like that was kind of another big thing this year just across the board. Everything had a virtual assistant. The Internet of Things is real now. We've been hearing about it here for years, and it hasn't been something that you can reach out and touch, but now Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant are in so many things, they can control practically everything in your house. So this, though, opens up a whole other range of debate for all of these products, though, because now you're not just arguing about uh, whether or not this fridge is the best or whether or not this TV has the nicest picture. Now you have to decide whether or not having Alexa or Bixby or Google Assistant is better, right? Or Roku. Uh, we've seen the kind of upstart company jump in with their own voice assistant. And it's going to be interesting to see if they can compete with companies like Amazon and Google. Uh, d does this like complicate your guys' shopping decisions at all? Like when you start seeing like, now you've got all of these different ecosystems trying to worm their way into all of the gadgets? T to an extent. I mean, like, uh, I'm really big into gaming systems, and that's typically how I access all of my streaming services. And so for me, the TV is still just a panel. But if I was to branch out into more sort of traditional TV services, if I was going to have satellite or cable, then yeah, I think those kinds of voice assistant services that might be built in suddenly becomes far more important. And I, I think this really does complicate my, I am in the market for a TV, and, uh, you know, it's complicating for me because I want to find a TV that actually has none of these features, <laughs> and it's becoming incredibly difficult. You, you want a dumb panel that you just hook stuff to. It's hard. If you want actually like a large, high quality one, it's yeah. actually very difficult to find. I have a tube TV, if you want. Yeah. Yeah, just I mean, sitting in a room. Only <laughs> if, if it's less than 20 inches, we'll talk. But if it's more than that, yeah. uh, you know. I, I've got a 13-inch one sitting on top of a shelf at home. Oh. All yours, buddy. There you go. That's how I'm trying to be. <laughs> 2018. Tube. CRT. So, Evan, you've been kind of plugged into uh, everything going on here because you're driving our social presence. What, what are some of the th things you've seen emerge? What trends are you seeing out there? DJI's gimbal. Really? Yeah. So, I was so surprised by this myself. So uh, a gimbal yes. is one of the stars of CES. Yes, right. OK. I, I need to hear more about this now. Yeah, so yeah. Please. I mean, to, to just so everyone knows, first and foremost, a, a gimbal is a thing that you mount your camera on top of. You've almost certainly seen them here at CES. Um, and it stabilizes the camera. They make them for phones. Um, but the one we're talking about was DJI's first uh, single-handed gimbal for DSLRs, and I think people are really excited about that because these have been on the market for a while, and they really make your video, if you create video, uh, they make it look incredibly good. But DJI has only had like very expensive Ronin uh, versions of this, and there's been other ones from China, like the Zin Ukraine, that people adore, but people really want the reliability um, and the, the, the trust in the brand from DJI, and I think that that uh, you know, it really got people's attention. Every year at CES, there's always like this one standout product that kind of gets people's attention that's super niche or yeah. quirky, whether it's the happy fork or whatever. And I guess this year it's... In terms of like a, just a strange niche device, I think that for me, the, the Gemini 
um, Android pocket computer is yeah. the one. And it's a phone with a full QWERTY keyboard, yes. but in the style of old Scion PDAs. So it's got like basically clacky keys yeah. that fold out from it. It's like time traveling back to 19... Like oh, ninety two, it's, it's amazing. So beautiful in every way. It's a, it's a, it's a clamshell. If you can imagine, like a small clamshell computer from the days of yore. Yeah. Um, but it's running Android seven right now. But you can dual boot Linux. And what I saw, um, one of the one of the creators was there. I was, I noticed that he had an SSH uh, app on, installed on this. And I know that this is crazy, but like this. This this team is has similar or has the same members from some of the team that designed the Scion ones, and so they've been in this game for a while. And this this uh, one of the co-founders was just, just so excited to show me a remote terminal, and it's like on this computer, basically like we're talking about just true nerds, right? This Dual boots Linux. You can SSH into another server. What more do you want? And yeah, this is. Definitely the nerdiest thing at CES this year. Um, it's one of the nerdiest things I think we've ever talked about on this stage, and that's yep. saying a lot. Yes. When you open it up, the back of it actually slides down and becomes a little stand for it to come up on. Like it's they they send you. Uh, we didn't. I don't think we got this in the video. In order to pop the back up, they send you a special tool. You you kind of just like push into it, and it just like pulls it out. I love how much you love this. Jess, what's got you excited out there? So I'm excited about seeing eSports at CES, like for the first time that I've really noticed. Um, so I met up with Fnatic, which is like one of the biggest eSports teams in the world. They have a ton of teams across a ton of games. Um, like League of Legends is one of their biggest teams. Uh, and I met up with them. They have new hardware here. But one of the things they were doing was just showing off how eSports pros live. So they had like a mini house set up where there were some pro players from Fnatic uh, walking around and talking about the input that they put into um, into the hardware that, that Fnatic is now going to be releasing, some keyboards and mice uh, that are designed for pro play but are for everyday consumers. There was, there was uh, like profiles you could set up for different games or whatever, different settings. Uh, there was also like in uh, built-in mic controls so you can mute or, you know, the mic or the camera, you can mute and turn it off. Um, and also, a way that you could preset keystrokes. So you could just do control uh, F8 or whatever, and it'll say, get to the back of the line, like automatically, so you don't have to type you know, the command yet. If Blizzard hasn't put that into Overwatch yet, then you can just hit that button and it'll show up on screen. Uh, so yeah, it was pretty cool. One of the things that I was really interested to go and look at was a quantum computer from IBM. Uh, we've heard an awful lot about quantum computing, but it's very hard to know if it's actually here yet and ready for prime time. Um, and IBM had their first 50 qubit quantum computer, or most of it. I kind of described it as like a steampunk chandelier because it's, yes, it looks nothing is, like exactly a, what it is. It looks like nothing like a traditional computer because it's it's very analog. Really, it, it involves sending uh, RF signals down to a chip, um, so a lot of that is involving. You know, very sort of old, uh, sort of coaxial wires. You know, there's cooling systems, so it's all this sort of like wiring, brass components, uh, steel tubes. Like, yeah, it's just amazing to look at. Super cool. Basically, the more qubits you have, which is the quantum equivalent of the traditional bits that we run on inside a normal computer, um, the more of those that you have, the more power you have. Which means that you can theoretically uh, run much more sophisticated algorithms, and therefore tackle much more broader, larger, more sophisticated problems. Uh, it really is kind of that simple. Like more qubits means more power. Fair enough. As CES has kind of shifted away from some of the more traditional uh, electronics categories, still a ton of TVs, they've started focusing a lot on like medical and um, assistive technology. I think that's uh, in CES is to come. I think that and cars are probably going to be the two things to really look out for. They're going to basically take over the show unless Google has anything to say about it. Um, but that is it for us for now. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. And uh, make sure to stay tuned for the Best of CES Awards right here on the stage. Again, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern if you're watching at home. And uh, plenty of other stuff live here from the straight stage at CES. Thanks for watching. <laughs>